Hello everyone! Today's case is going to demonstrate why it is so important to take a CBCT scan before placing an implant. This periapical radiograph was taken to evaluate the site of missing tooth number 29. Number 30 is endodontically treated with a periapical radiolucency and this tooth was eventually extracted. If you're planning an implant at this site, number 29 and also number 30, what are some vital informations that you must have prior to placing an implant? I think you should consider the overall bone quality of this area. Did it fully heal? Is it fully remodeled? Or is it too radiolucent? Or is it primarily um, empty in a way that there's little to no calcified Reuben bone. Does the alveolar crest uh, intact with little to no um, loss of reach height or do you have a severe loss of reach height? What about um, other vital structures such as the mandibular canal or mental foramen? Ask yourself, can you visualize the mandibular canal and mental foramen on this periapical radiograph? If you think you see it, where is it? If you don't think you see them, that's fine. I'm going to draw your attention to this radiolucent zone or area which is consistent with a submandibular gland fossa. So it's very radiolucent. Part of the reason that you may have a difficulty determining the location of the mandibular canal is perhaps the canal is located within this submandibular gland fossa and it's not being seen clearly. Perhaps the canal is located in the bony area but due to the uh, uh, bone density you may not be able to see the mandibular canal. So would you take a risk to place an implant just based on your periapical radiograph? Well, answer is simple. You know the answer already. You should not do that for yourself nor for your patient, right? You don't want to jeopardize the health of your patient by placing an implant without having all the pertinent clinical information that you need. So I'm going to now take you to a CBCT scan. You're looking at a CBCT scan of the same patient after the extraction of number 30. So let's go ahead and look at the coronal view. We're at the side of retromolar pad. I'm going to move the scan anteriorly. We're seeing the APCs of 32. And I have also conveniently traced the mandibular canal. So your goal is to continue to follow the canal as I move the scan, move the scan anteriorly. What is this line or this area? That's the right mental frame and it exits superiorly and laterally. And let me go back and try to trace the canal or follow the canal one, once again. And one last time. There you go. So you can all see and clearly visualize the location of the mental foramen on Combeam CT, right? Now let's determine where this mental foramen is located in relationship to the surrounding teeth. So in order to determine that, uh, we can look at both axial as well as sagittal, but let's take a look at axial view first. Here's the mental foramen and there's that's consistent with that disruption focal disruption of the buccal cortex of the mandible 
there you go right now frame it now I'm going to move the scan superiorly and what you're seeing here are the roots of the cane uh, of canine um, 27 28 29 is missing 30 is missing and has been grafted and number 31 and 32 so where is that metal frame located exactly it's at the side of number 29 now let's take a look at that from the sagittal view as I move through the sagittal try to visualize the mandibular canal which is coursing anteriorly and you can see the beautiful outline of the mandibular canal clearly which we could not say that if um, on just based on periapical radiograph and you see how the mental foramen exits superiorly and laterally like that so here's the mental foramen and where is it indicated by the green line it's at the side of number 29 where we want to place an implant but remember we could not see the mental foramen on periapical radiograph so now I'm going to show you cross-sectional view of the area which I've already made a focal trough and uh, these are intervals that I generated with uh, cross-sectional images with the interval of 2 millimeter extending from 28 to number 31 and I've made the measurements of the width as well as the height so, so that provide a referring dentist can determine the size of an implant based on my measurement but I want you to see this one this particular site let me see if there's a way for me to uh, zoom in on that um, by doing that I think unfortunately I lost the uh, measurement that I pr that I've made previously but what I want you to see is because of the mental foramen now height of the ridge is only uh, about 10 millimeter whereas if I go just distal to that side of mental foramen you have the height that's a lot closer to 13 to 14 millimeter so what a difference it makes right you're losing roughly 3 to 4 millimeters of the implant length or the reach height because of the mental foramen so it is yes crucial to clearly visualize the location of the mental foramen we also have a 3d rendering of the area these six lines are consistent with the areas where I made the measurements and again here's a mental foramen suddenly height of my ridge the measurement ridge is a lot shorter because I'm accounting for this structure so this is the reason why you should take it. We could not see peri uh, mental frame on periapical radiograph, but on comb beam, we can clearly see it. And especially if you're planning planning an implant in the premolar region or first molar, you should definitely definitely take a comb beam CT. Okay, so that's it for me. Let me um, go back and show you the radiograph one last time thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you again through my YouTube channel